you may share your screen. Yes. Is it visible, sir? It is visible and audible also. Sir, yeah, continue. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. I think I, I was I am given 15 minutes of time. I'll stick to that. And uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Anuja ji, Dr. Srinivas Murthy ji, Sri Dr. Panda ji for considering me for this important and uh, uh, workshop conference. Uh, my I was given a, a difficult and typical topic. Statistics, statistics to analytics, a disrupt, disruptive transition in medical research. I don't know what is disruptive, uh, but, but I can say it's an aggressive transition in medical research. Uh, this is uh, uh, what I was given and asked to talk. Thank you very much. And uh, we had an excellent presentations of the previous luminaries uh, of speakers and um, given a lot of information which will support my talk. So every, <clears throat> everything should be made as simple as possible but not simpler, I understand. So people always think that, or people usually say that, there are three kinds of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Uh, uh, Benjamin Disrael has told this, but this is not true. It, it, it will become a damn lie if you mis misuse the data, change the data, or manipulate the data, then analyze. Otherwise, there is no other science available to you except statistics to estimate your results, Otherwise, we're left with the zero to nine numbers and you don't know what to do. So to overcome that kind of a, uh, what you call, a, uh, uh, feeling or understanding in your mind, we just go through this book, Professor C.R. Rao's uh, Statistics and Truth, which is available uh, in Google. Please go through this. Thank you. So I have been asking this question since two decades where I, I'm, I'm a teacher of biostatistics and big data and all. I asked them, uh, most of them, what do you know about statistics? So many people give the answer like this. It is boring. But whether you like it, you don't like it, you hate it, you curse it, you have to use the statistics. There is no other science available to you for your estimation. So why statistics? Because uh, I, you are the luminaries of doctors present. Why I am here as a statistician or a mathematician here? Because patients vary, physicians vary, nurses vary, hospitals vary, measurements vary, disease states vary. Immune response varies, drug adherence varies. There is no place where variation is there. To capture that variation, the study of statistics is evolved. So people also have some confusion about the, interpreting the fractions. I just giving a forewarning before I go to the main topic. So in, a, in England, a Royal Commission reviewing the statistics report, where it is said that the middle class families have on the average 2.2 children. The minister got very upset and 2.2 children, how can one can have? Two children, three children, four children they can have. And he was scolding everyone. Then the, the committee finally come, came to a conclusion and reported to the minister saying that the figure of 2.2 children per adult female is in some respect absurd. It is suggested that the middle classes be paid money to increase the average to a rounded and more convenient number. It is not like that. By using statistics, you also get the decimals which you should accept. Systematic errors also you get while using your statistics. A doctor and a patient conversation. A doctor says, you have a very serious disease. Of 10 persons who get this disease, only one survives. But do not worry. It is lucky to, you came to me, for I have recently had nine patients with this disease, and they all died of it. Generally, it won't happen. People will not die systematically. They die randomly. And how does statistics affect you? Now, uh, all the speakers told about the present scenario of AI and big data. It, it, emergency preparedness, healthcare, transportation system, public health, clinical trials, weather forecast, there is no place where statistics is not being used. Therefore, you should be clever enough how to use and avoid such mistakes. That is, if at all someone knows only um, uh, job, uh, trigonometry, it is correct. Someone knows that trigonometry as well as uh, algebra, this is wrong. Therefore, you should be clever enough to do the things. Therefore, come, going to my topic, the, the quiet statisticians have changed our world, not by discovering new facts or technical developments, but by changing the ways we reason, experiments, and form of our opinions about it. High kicks. So how the evolution of statistical science has taken place? So I just give an example of 17th century autopsy records of treatment of King Charles II. Uh, it is a big one, but uh, 
they have the the time at that time what was the mode of treatment available the battery of doctors at 8 o'clock on monday morning in february 2 1685 king charles was being shaved in his bedroom with sudden cry he fell backward and had a violent convulsion he became unconscious rallied once and twice and after a few days he died so the battery of tests or the battery of treatments that uh, the physicians given at that time um, I, when first step treatment the king was bled to the extent of pin from a vein in his right arm and an emetic and purgative were the administered the uh, uh, what you call the cartharite cartharitis were repeated at frequent intervals for external treatment plaster of burgundy pitch and pigeon drug was applied so on and so forth the battery of things which were available at knowledge available at the time they did they uh, they executed on him but the unfortunately the king died so present the evidence based medicine same thing has been transformed into like this so this is the uh, disease the 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 king charles 2 had so gout ulcer on heel i think doctors might be knowing this kidney damage convulsions uh, urinia dehydration and that that has happened is it possible at present scenario in the in the era of evidence based medicine in contrast much could have been done today to treat to treat charles and to have prolonged his life considerably and with good quality so therefore it is possible now so the medicine has changed the statistics have changed everything has transformed over to uh, evidence based medicine that's what the this the autopsy says <clears throat> when going back to uh, uh, before 606 bc the first clinical trial was undertaken the subject servants of the king intervention pulse to eat and water to drink control group with the children who eat of the portion of the king's meat after 10 days at the end of 10 days their countenances appeared fairer than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat red meat is bad for one's health so questions raised by with the study whether the experiment and control group characteristics are same what was the outcome whether it is the main fairness is your outcome why 10 days how were the infect, uh, in inferences summarized there were no answer for because that the time this is what the information they had now coming to back a real world of statistics how it has been evolved in 18th century the gauss or popularly known as the gaussian distribution or bell shaped curve which has actually reverberated the statistics when we repeat an experiment numerous times and average our results the random variable representing the average or mean tends to have a normal distribution as the number of experiments become large many physical characteristics tend to follow a normal distribution as a, for example height weight so on and so forth errors in measurements or production process can often be approximated by normal distribution the statistics actually the 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 uh, the take off of statistics started with this distribution subsequently carl pearson in 18th to 19th century also known as the pearson co- 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 correlation co- very popularly known as is a bivariate kind of a thing where the association or or the linear relation between the two sets of data has been um, uh, invented which we call as the carl pearson but so this has actually reverberated the the theory of statistics for a kind of a, an understanding the associations of the variables and this is the one gosset who has invented the t test uh, actually 860 to 70% of the people use the t test whether the experimental and control group is a difference uh, is there a significant difference between the experiment and control group is there a difference between pre and post uh, uh, interventions is there a difference between a your variable and of the available uh, standard variable these are the things which had been solved by using the popular test called the t test by the um, gosset in uh, william gosset by in 19th century so he has also used the normal distribution equal variances random sampling for his test which is a popular known as student t test and the father of the statistics where the professor r f fisher the contributions which we fondly uh, known as sir ronald imer fisher the in his contributions the t test the f test the chi square test the correlation coefficient the anova the discriminant function analysis multivariate data so many um, inventions were made and it has been practical practically demonstrated during his time so coming to the uh, neyman's uh, theory in say 18th century where now the testing of hypothesis which you are using p values 
type 1 error, type 2 error, rejecting the null hypothesis. The concepts have been evolved during his time where this now, even now, they are very popular. Of course, the Bayesian theories have come, but still most of them use these uh, p-values or test of hypothesis, testing of hypothesis for your rejection or acceptance of your null hypothesis or accepting your alternative hypothesis. Now, the, the Indian scientist, which is very, very popular, Mahalnobis, where his contribution is Mahalnobis distance, which we call popularly known, that has been used for multivariate um, cluster analysis. And even now, the, the machine learning and deep learning technology in the AI, the, the distances have been very popularly used. And he's also called the National Statistics Day, celebrated on his name, Professor PC Mahalnobis, where Mahalnobis distance is a very popularly a known um, statistical technique which he has invented. And the living legend, one not year, one year still is um, is able, actually is able to read my mail yesterday, which I have sent. Uh, so we wish him to live more, longer. One not one years, who is uh, the chair of Philadelphia and national chair for uh, U.S. government, so on and so forth. Is the now he is considered the living legend of statistics. In his time, all the inferences there are inequality the theorems. And also uh, the multivariate data analysis have been invented and they are being applied using the anthropometric data by Professor C. R. Rao. So the battery of tests which we have been using in medical, especially in the medical research, T-test, parity test, two sample T-test, one way analysis variance, PSN correlation, multi-way analysis variance, I have the battery of tests have been evolved and have been applied for a better uh, outcome, for a better interpretation of the medical data. So therefore, the types of statistical data analysis based on a purposive descriptive analysis or inferential analysis, the number of variables, either it is a univariate or bivariate or a multivariate, and type of variables, either categorical or continuous or textual or spatial, or the statistical test, whether it's parametric or non-parametric, parametric basically which follows the normal distribution and uh, symmetric, where non-parametric is a kind of categories are not following the uh, usual normal distribution, different statistical methods have got involved for applying this kind of data. <clears throat> and also the emergence of the multiple multivariate data analysis where the principal component plays even now the, in the artificial intelligence, which is a dimension reduction problem. Suppose you have 1000 variables of data, can we reduce them into 20 or 30, 30 linear combinations in, uh, using all the 1000 variables, retaining the 1000 variables variation and only reducing it to 20, 30 a dimension of 110th or 120th, then we can use into data. Otherwise, 1000 variables using is a impossible task. <clears throat> how to factor the data, different factors we can make. How you discriminate, suppose you're taking the normal and the undernourished child using some of the background variables, can you discriminate normal as normal or undernourished as undernourished using the discriminant function analysis? Or can you ask the data, whether the data is homogeneous or having the patterns in the data, which we call as a question analysis. These are very important in terms of the present scenario of big data as well as the artificial intelligence. And also statistics in bioinformatics is now the very, very widely used, very intensely used. And in terms of the big data concept, these are the so many statistical techniques have been used in bioinformatics. And if you see this, the scenario of say 200 years to now, we have gone from hypothesis testing to evidence-based medicine conventional statistics to advanced modeling and multivariate statistics, small computations to big data analytics. These are the changes that took place since uh, over a, you can say a century, you can say that. So this is the data which you are dealing with. I think that my pre previous speakers explained very well. Even yotta bytes of data, you cannot write on the paper how many zeros the bytes have that much. So uh, that many thousand jetta bytes become one jetta byte. So that if you want to write on a paper, so many zeros, you will get fed up with this. That kind of a memory, the, that kind of storage you are available now. So every day, 2.5 quintillion bytes have been generated. This is the data, open source data value, the magnitude of data. So therefore, big data in, in, a, in a glance, we will have 98,000 speeds a day, 69,000 uh, status reports, 6, 6 lakhs searches, 11 million instrument messages, 168 million emails, 1820 GB generated every day. But maybe may, uh, entire data may not be useful for you, but this much of data has been generated. And previously, we are only knew about structured data. We are giving the 
uh, weight, height, very structured data. Now we have the quasi structured data and also semi structured data, unstructured data also. So now the, the data type of data has also been um, enormously changed and you are able to use even unstructured data for the analysis. So these are the skills of the data scientists where the combination of statistics and computers required. Probably many people, even many doctors, I am I'm surprised to see in our artificial intelligence meeting, the neurosurgeons, two or three surgeons, we, we, we are, there are members of, they are really able to write in Python, SQL, using SQL databases, and they are writing absolutely very strong AI applications. So this is the scenario, statistical theory, tabulation and averages, probability and statistical modeling, base and methodology, evidence-based meta-analysis. Finally, now, previously we, we stopped at evidence-based meta-analysis. Now AI and big data stood on the top and, uh, and also reverberating the world. So therefore, Madam already mentioned about the data which you are getting. It has a lot of volume. It has a lot of variety and a lot of velocity and a lot of um, speed as well as the veracity. So these are the characteristics of the big data we are getting. Therefore, the techniques also, we should use the big data techniques to extract the data, to identify the data, to retrieve the data, to store the data. The Hadoop and big data techniques have been enormously used. And also I'm coming to big data analytics, uh, where the data sir. set includes structural. And Please conclude. What I've told you, all the things, this can be possible with the big data. And the, for the policy, the big data gives you a, a kind of a very strong policy because we have the data which is very strong, very big, very variety, very um, and also variety of data, so that different statistical models will be fit into that and get a one which is Vishnu, outcome will be a good for policy. So finally, the the data mining and machine learning and statistical analysis is the one which now is the ruling the roost. So these are the uh, this is the circle. Uh, this is the way where data mining and artificial intelligence has been used. So therefore, these are the step steps, data queries, data processing, data analysis, result of validation, data preparation, data cleaning. These are the steps one should follow for, for converting the medical information into insights or policy. Therefore, finally, data quality is very important. Without data quality, the results which you get is madam told garbage in garbage out which will lead you bad policy. Not only bad policy, it is the circumstance, the, the repercussions are very bad. Therefore, for the, in the keeping that in view, ICMR National Institute of Medical Statistics created data quality guidelines, how during the survey, before the survey, after the survey, the data should be clear, clean, data should be treated, and finally the accurate data to be um, used for the analysis. So that so these are the some content of the guidelines you can see. Um, you can download this book, Data Quality. Vishnu Vatan, sir, uh, please conclude. Yeah, it's over. Uh, thank you very much.